Hey everybody, it's Randall Schwartz back again after a slight break. I'm sorry about that break. We'll try to get him a little more often again, as I've said actually two or three other times. But I've just finished work on a new little project that I want to share with you because I think it might save some of you some time. So first off, big disclaimer, I use VS Code. That's my IDE of choice. I don't know how well something like this would translate into the... JetBrains based ones, but I'm using VS Code. And one of the things I like to do is when I have an idea, I want to noodle around with it. That's what they call that. Just sort of toy around with it, see what's going on. And in the past, I've used DartPad. DartPad's real easy. It comes up. You've got an editor. They're making it better so that you can actually see your errors and see some documentation all in context. But it's still pale in comparison to what I get when I am looking at a Dart or Flutter application in VS Code. There's way more stuff. Plus, DartPad is limited to the packages that you can pull in. It has to be one of the ones they've approved. It also has to be limited to packages that work with uh, web because it's a web-based uh, compilation. So therefore, it has to work that way. So I, about a year ago, I wrote a shell script that would generate a project from scratch in Dart or Flutter, depending on my choice, and would uh, automatically populate it with a few of my favorite packages and then fire it up directly in uh, um, VS Code. So I uh, liked that, but uh, I was inspired recently by the uh, ob observable flutter uh, screencast uh, done by um, uh, Craig LeBenz and uh, this time Felix, the uh, guy that uh, created a bunch of stuff, but one of the things he created was Mason. Mason allows you to have templated stuff. I liked the idea of templated stuff, and I wanted to have a practical project to do it on. I went, wait, I have this need to build arbitrary projects, and I have a bunch of things I want to put into it. So I spent a good long weekend, or maybe the middle of a week, weekend, I don't know, I forget now. But what I created was a couple of tools to replace the tools that had been done all completely in shell, but I'm using Mason now, and so it's a lot cooler. And I want to share that with you, and I'll show you the link at the end of the show to go and install this for yourself. If you use VS Code, it's an easy drop-in, and I think you'll like it. Well, the first thing I would need to do is I'm just sitting here staring at a blank VS Code window. But what I want to do is bring up a Dart project. Okay, so I've got this idea. I've got to do a Dart project. All I need to do is go to a shell and type my command, dplay, D-P-L-A-Y. But, uh, you know, I don't have a shell window open right now, so I use uh, Alfred on the Mac, which is a launcher, and I can tell it, go ahead and run this command like you're running it in the background on an arbitrary shell. Now, I will hit return and watch. Within a few seconds, I say within a few seconds, my system's slow today. Boom! I am now in a new code window. But look what's in this code window. Look at this. We have uh, a main, a main.dart. We also have a, uh, a bin directory. We've got a bunch of other stuff. We'll go through all this in a second. But there, now I've got something I can go ahead and write a function in. Okay, so here, great, and I run. Right, there's my run right there, and boom, down here on the bottom of the screen, we got the value 3. So I was really close to just being able to quickly test this application out, boom, and it's done. Okay, now what did dplay build for me? It built me a readme, which is pretty pointless. It built me a pub spec, and in the pub spec, I've got uh, my floating point or my uh, functional programming tool, fpdart. I've got Riverpod annotation, which means I can do generated Riverpod in here. I'm very prioritized for that. I've got Riverpod itself. We've got uh, build runner and custom lint. That custom lint allows me to have Riverpod lint. I've got Riverpod generator. And just for grins, I've got very good analysis, which I found to be the best of breed 
of all of the lints out there, so I'm using that one now. Now you may be curious about this weird name here. If I don't specify the name, it comes up as a UUID. And that means I don't have to think about a name. I just immediately drop me into a place that's guaranteed unique. And it's in slash temp, so I can actually go out and fetch it later. But at least everything all works consistently with the fact that it's this UUID. So there's our pub spec. Here's our build. And this is set up again for Riverpod with the uh, built providers. Uh, analysis options pulls up uh, very good analysis, which I really like. And I turn off a couple things in there because it's a little annoying. And then this enables the Riverpod lint as well. So all set up for me once again. Uh, very opinionated. And none of this is pluggable. If you want to change it to something else for you, just fork my project and create your own version of dplay and fplay. So see, that's pretty good for a Dart app, right? But what about a Flutter app? There's usually more things in a Flutter app. Again, using Alfred, I invoke fplay instead of dplay. And both of those take parameters. We'll get to that in a second. So again, a few seconds later, we will have, here it comes, wait for it, wait for it. And there we go. All right. I've got a very slow machine these days, so it's definitely crunching there. So again, we now have a Flutter application uh, similar to the counter app, but I've ripped out a bunch of the stuff and I've added everything that I need for uh, FP Dart and for all the Riverpod coolness, hooks and everything. So we look up here, we see we are uh, pulling in uh, Flutter hooks and hooks Riverpod. And at the top level main, we're building a custom provider container. So this is all this is all the bells and whistles. This is all the cool stuff that I would normally need on pretty much the core of every Riverpod application that I'm using. I've got a bunch of it commented out because there are things that I don't need all the time and they just get in the way. Um, down here in build, I've got a material app, and we'll get down to a home page. My home page is just a hook consumer widget, so I can put a hook directly in here. But of course, I'm actually not using either the uh, river pod side, which is consumer, or the hook side, which is hook, in this thing. It's just I could add that real easily because I've already got the right uh, flavor of um, widget right there. Okay, so that's all really cool. The other thing you'll notice is at the top, it's, it said pull in, uh, oh, it didn't say pull in functional. That's weird. I wonder why I left that out. Oh, it's right here. I pulled in functional Dart. What functional Dart does is it actually permits FP Dart, which defines a state, to be coexistent with uh, Flutter, which also defines a state, allows them to both be in the same application. By the way, if you're playing with FP Dart, I just got my pull request accepted to actually demonstrate this as part of FP Dart to how to deal with uh, exports and imports and show and hide and renaming stuff with type def. So that's a fun little thing as well, but this is just a side effect of that. So I've got those. I've got, uh, again, analysis options. Looks the same as it did before. Again, I've got the builder in there so that uh, I can be building everything related to Riverpod. Um, I've got uh, a pub spec that's a little bit larger this time. I've got, uh, uh, let's say I've got FP Dart, Riverpod annotations, but the Flutter also includes Cupertino icons, Flutter hooks, uh, hooks Riverpod, all the dependencies are there. They're out of order, so I'm getting a lint on that. I can always just sort those later. It wasn't important to me and simplifies the way I build it. You'll see that in a minute. Okay, build runner, custom lint, Riverpod to lint, all the good stuff. Riverpod generator, of course, very good analysis. So a lot of these are the same as the Dart one, but we've added in the specific things for Flutter. Flutter hooks, hooks Riverpod, for example, are unique to the Flutter side of things. And also the stuff down here for uses of material design. So that's also there. And Flutter test has to get pulled in. All right, so that's sort of the results of the tools. Let's take a look at how we get to there and how Mason is involved. 
So what we have to look at is the D play and F play commands. Now I just made it this one liner used to be about 20 lines long with a bunch of shell commands in it like uh, uh, flutter pub add this and so on but now it's just this one line run mason and run the code pad. And code pad's what I'm also going to show you in a bit and all it does is pass a few arguments into running code pad including uh, defaulting to slash temp by default and defaulting to the name that is a UUID, which part I haven't shown you yet. Let me actually show you that. So, so you didn't like all those long UUIDs. All you have to say is dplay. So there's dart again, and I'll say Randall test. Okay, I do that. And again, a few seconds later, bum, 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 we are going to be in an a window that has just my Randall test name. Now the nice thing about that is then it's trivial for me to drag that down into a more permanent place out of slash temp if I want. Notice all the arguments are changed here. Now it's actually called the right things. Instead of being that long UUID, everything is now designed to be based on that. Okay, so let's go back to dplay. dplay again is, uh, has these two arguments, either a UUID and slash temp or a specific uh, name and or a specific location. So that's that. So fplay, very similar. The only difference really is that dart is false instead of true. Yes, I could have made them one script with an argument. No, I'm lazier than that. And I also have got dplay and fplay burned into my brain from having those same named shell scripts for many moons. Okay, so let's go look at the mason brick to figure out how this is actually working. Uh, one of these lines is in my mason bricks. There it is. Okay, so this is the mason brick. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about how bricks work, but here's the code pad brick. And notice the hierarchy here. This is my, essentially my, uh, my uh, project. And so I create a, uh, possibly I create a bin that has the name as snakecase.dart. And notice it's enclosed in conditionals that goes from dart to slash dart. Uh, and that way, if it's not, if it is a dart app, I get this thing. If not a Dart app, this goes away and Mason is smart enough to not even generate the file. It doesn't generate an empty file. It just doesn't generate anything at all. Down over on the live side, if it is not a Dart application, so that means it's a, a Flutter application, I generate both functional and main. Functional is uh, straight text. Main, however, has to have the name of the project up in here. So, of course, that gets substituted in as well. That's the only substitution I do on the stuff that ends up being useful and runnable. Um, the pub spec is a little weird. I didn't want this pub spec to be analyzed by the analyzer. So I expand in uh, mustache, expand an X, which is always empty. So the cool thing is this generates a file name, pubspec.yaml, but it's not seen as a YAML file or specifically the pubspec YAML file by the analyzer that's analyzing this text. Boy, did I have to work a little bit to figure this stuff out. But this is the trickiest one because as you see through here, I've got Dart parts, I've got Flutter parts in both the uh, main stuff and the test and the Flutter at the end. So I had to make those all appropriately conditional. My readme uh, either pulls up Dart or Flutter after the name of the uh, application as well. So there are all these pieces. Now, the, ass the assisting parts of uh, Mason includes the pre and post gen, and that's where a lot of the magic is as well. So for pre gen, I basically take uh, the input variables and see if it has a name. If the name happens to be UUID, that means it defaulted. So that means I'm going to generate a name. So I do a UUID and I put a D underscore in front of it if it's Dart. I put an F underscore in front of it if it's Flutter. 
That way in slash tamp, it'll be clear to me which are my Dart projects, which are my Flutter projects without recognizing the long UUID because that gets pretty crazy. Okay, then I take that name, I put it in snake name, that way I can easily refer to that in all my, uh, in all my templates. So see, that's where the snake name comes from in here, right? And then I want to make sure I don't have one already. I don't want to clobber any existing file. So I just do a simple little um, uh, directory lookup, see if it exists, and if it does exist, I throw an exception which Mason catches just fine and keeps from going on. It won't touch any of the files if my pre-gen has thrown. That's a good plan. All right. And then uh, my post is not much, actually. My post, well, you know, actually, it's, a little, it's clever. So I take, again, the project name. I take and run a process in the directory of the project. So working directory down in snake name, right? If it's a Dart project, I run Dart pub get. And that gives me all of the, um, that, 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 that fetches everything that I, is in the pub spec that I, by now I've generated. If it's a Flutter project, I run Flutter create platforms web. Ooh, why did I do that? Because I didn't want to have to template out all the other stuff that's already there that Flutter Create knows how to make. So I just simply come in over the top of it and do Flutter Create dot. Maybe some of you have done that already, where you have a project that's missing, say, an iOS folder, but you want to build it for iOS. You just go in and say Flutter Create dot at the top level, and it creates them all. I'm using that all the way around. It works pretty nice. But I also narrow it to the web platform only. And that's because typically I'm going to preview this and I'm going to do this in the web because it's the fastest thing to build. It's also very much mimics what DartPad originally had. So again, I'm mimicking DartPad but using code, VS Code, to do the details. And so once that's all done... Okay, I've either done a Dart pub get or I've done a Flutter create. By the way, Flutter create automatically does a pub get too. So I don't have to do that as a separate step. So I, that I found out by trial and error. Love it. Works well. Finally, after the, all that's done, I then come down and I invoke code. This is the command line function for code. Dash in, make sure it's a new window. And dot, which is in fact, I'm since I'm doing a run sync within the snake directory, I'm going to end up being at the top of the project. Then I also invoke code one more time, where I say open up um, bin snake name or lib main dart, depending on whether it's dart or not. And again, down in the snake directory, I do this. This gives me automatically access to either the bin or the, uh, which is going to be your Dart program, or it's going to give me access to main.dart if it's a Flutter program. Wow. Bunch of cool stuff. All works really well. Published in the Brickyard as CodePad. You can install it immediately. Um, I'm going to put a URL in the show notes about how to go find that in the Brickyard. But I hope you've enjoyed this. It works really well. And uh, I'm using it constantly now. It's really easy just to pop open uh, brand new projects uh, this way or just noodling around. And because it's in slash temp, it'll get thrown away. I don't have to worry about cleaning those up later. And I have them until the next time my machine reboots. So works pretty good. Hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy, uh, like, and all the other things. Subscribe and all that other stuff, the usual things for a YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you all again next time.